What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a very exciting video for you guys, whether you are a beginner at film photography or you have five plus years under your belt. Recently, I've been experimenting with new film stocks that I've seen online, whether they are expired or newly developed. Uh, one of them being from a company called Quiet We're Dreaming. You should definitely check them out. But in the worlds of 35 millimeter film stocks alone, the options are almost endless. You could go through all the modern available ones, and then you'll start to find out the expired ones, and then there's gonna be new ones developing. It's really easy to get lost in the sauce and kind of wonder what people are talking about in conversations of what this film stock looks like and what it can do. So this is my top five 35 millimeter film stocks that you should be using. Starting off with number one is Kodak Gold 200. Back in my visco ho days of my high school photography, Kodak Gold 200 was one of my favorite emulations to make. So when I kind of jumped into film photography in 2020, and found out that Kodak Gold 200 was available, I was like, oh, I gotta have that. This film stock is extremely underrated because everybody's drinking from the punch bowl of Portra 400, which of course is a magnificent film stock. No hate on it at all. It's popular for a reason. But Kodak Gold 200 gives off that Portra-esque warmth, plus the nostalgic imperfections of like the photography that we're more familiar with like back in the day with a little bit more of a harsher grain structure and more saturation than portrait could give off naturally. I would say that Kodak Gold 200 is perfect for scenes that are in direct sunlight. I've used it in overcast weather and it doesn't really look that good. And when Kodak Gold 200 is underexposed, it really doesn't look that good unless you're going for that more like lo-fi look that a lot of people would enjoy. Um, if you like that, then underexposed Kodak Gold 200, and I think you might like it. I usually go at box speed, which means like I shoot at 200 ISO. I don't really overexpose it that much because uh, it doesn't really have the latitude capabilities that Porsche 400 would have. But, you know, go ahead, do whatever you want. But I typically shoot at 200. Number two on the list is Lomography's Color Negative 800. And if you look at the sample images right now, Like, holy crap. This film stock looks super good. Judging by my reaction, you might be wondering why it's not number one on the list. And the reason why it's not is because it's so freaking expensive nowadays. If Kodak and Fujifilm were kind of like that metaphorical starting five on the basketball team, Lomography used to be that first guy off the bench to kind of uh, provide some support on the court. It didn't really have that starting five fame. It provided that supplementary like scoring and people had like a, you know, a nice soft spot for the first guy off the bench. But Lomography has a company and with all of its film stocks included became that superstar status it you know left the team it got signed a hundred million dollar deal for five years and it's now a superstar in its own team the colors are incredible they are one of my favorites it kind of subtracts that over warmthness that portrait 800 can give off and for an 800 uh, film stock you would kind of expect it to be a little bit more grainy but the grain's not even that bad I highly recommend using Loma 800 for photographing landscapes, especially during golden hour, although it's perfect for like, you know, broad daylight scenarios and portraits even. I've used it in some overcast settings as well, and I think it performs very well. I kind of prefer it over Kodak film stocks, but that's a very subjective opinion. Number three on the list is Kodak XR100. and. The opinion about this film stock kind of doesn't make any sense to me, but it's kind of treated like the ugly duckling of the Kodak group. A lot of people don't like it. It's primarily meant for landscape photography, but I've used it for portrait photography, and I think it's incredibly beautiful for that. Like, I really don't understand why it's hated so much because it's a very sharp film. It's perfect for broad, direct sunlight because it's a 100 speed film. It's slow, but you don't really need that fast of a film in broad daylight to begin with the saturation contrast i'll leave it up to you if you really like it it's not really you know like porsche 400 where you can push it like crazy and have it look like all pastel and painty this one's gonna look a little bit you know a little bit more edgier with that contrast and saturation punch but i personally enjoy that the common complaint that i've heard about ektar 100 for portraits specifically is that the reds in the skin can pop out a little bit too much because ektar is such a saturated film personally i haven't really encountered that problem at all it might be because of my film lab and the scanner that they use or because i you know the way that i like slightly tweak my film scans it kind of doesn't look like that but then again i am colorblind 
Just like Kodak Gold 200, I typically don't overexpose Ektar 100 because it can't really handle too much overexposure, so I also shoot this at box speed. Number four on the list is Film Photography Project's Eastman Double X. Now, this is a black and white film and also from a company that's not as well known as Kodak, Fujifilm, and Lamography. I've only tried this film stock out once and I won this at a contest from an event called Beers and Cameras that we have here in California. There's one in Sacramento and I think there's one in LA as well. Eastman Double X is actually a cinema black and white film used in movies like James Bond and it's actually Kodak Eastman Double X just rebranded but Cinestill just put out a new film stock at least for 120 medium format called Cinestill uh, black and white double X and it's this exact film I think a little bit more accurate to the Kodak Eastman double X used in movies I know that was like a whole mouthful but it's pretty much movie film but when I shot through one roll of this film it gave me a very flat look it's very smooth and when I added a little bit more contrast and uh, uh, you know mess with the tone curve a little bit it was super smooth and I really liked the results that I got from it and you know it always begs the question like why shoot black and white film and like why don't you just shoot color film and convert it in black and white look man like as, as, as a lot of people would say like actually shooting black and white film in your camera kind of makes you think differently in terms of composition what to look for plus the results it does kind of come out differently than how you would uh when you convert anything to black and white and of course you can always emulate it it's just not the same experience but yeah if you want to try out any black and white film for the summer i really recommend this film photography projects eastman double x and at number five i'll really want to give a shout out and some love to porsche 160 Yeah, it's part of the Portra line. We already know that it's really good. It's the cheapest out of the, you know, the heavenly trio, 160, 400, 800. I feel like 160 doesn't get that much love. It's perfect for broad daylight scenarios. Like, why would you want to waste a uh, 400 speed film in broad daylight uh, when you're going to be shooting at like F16? For Portra 160, you can shoot a little bit more wide open for a little bit more shallow depth of field, but I personally still shoot at five, six, or eight. But even in overcast scenarios, if you get the scans and kind of like knock down the temperature slider, like maybe like to negative three or negative four, it kind of daylight balances it and makes it look pretty damn smooth. And because it's cheaper, it makes it a little bit more accessible and allows you to shoot even more. So, you know, Portra 160 is pretty freaking dope. I really love the results that I get for my portraits on Portra 160. That was a mouthful. It really gives a nice creamy, warm richness to skin tones, and it doesn't really overdo it. Even in golden hour, it doesn't overdo it, so that's super awesome. And that's all I have for you guys in this video. Make sure you like it. Comment down below on what your favorite film stock is, whether it's from this list or whether it's from your personal list. That's very different. Or are all of these films overrated? Uh, um, huh. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more film photography content, whether you are a beginner or a person with five plus years of experience. It doesn't matter. We welcome anybody and everybody with open arms into this channel and in the comment section below. So I will see you in the next one. Peace. Usually I uh, slap the camera because that's over and uh, here we go. Oh, peace.